at Westminster Magistrates Court whilst Julian Assange is presented to court via video link in front of Judge Barreza. We are protesting his incarceration and we are demanding our voices are heard and our demands are met. Julian Assange is a publisher of WikiLeaks. He has given the world tremendous publications and we stand in solidarity with him. We ask people to join us in advocating for Julian Assange, the, public, the publisher of WikiLeaks.org. This is a speech that Maxine Walker has written from the Committee to Defend Julian Assange. We have turned this speech into a flyer and we're going to flood the streets of London with a message of advocating for Julian Assange's freedom. Thank you so much everyone for coming here today. Julian Assange, the day before his incarceration, his forced expulsion from the Ecuadorian embassy said, who am I? I fought for liberty and I was deprived of all liberty. I fought for freedom of speech and I was denied all speech. I fought for the truth and became the subject of a thousand lies. Julian Assange sent this message via Twitter on the 10th of April 2019, the day before he was dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy and imprisoned in maximum security, Belmarsh Gaul. He remains isolated there today, awaiting a decision and extradition to the USA on bogus espionage charges carrying a possible 175 year sentence. And for what? In 2010, he and WikiLeaks published millions of secret leaked documents showing the unvarnished, revolting facts about illegal Western wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The murder of civilians corruption, torture, rendition, and death squads. In doing so, WikiLeaks has allowed us to see raw, naked power before it puts on a suit and tie, slicks back its hair, and conceals the knife. And the US, UK, and other NATO partners have been after his blood ever since. The US, UK, NATO partner wars in Afghanistan and Iraq unleashed continuing disaster on the Middle East with millions dead and 37 million people displaced while none of the murdering war criminals responsible, Blair, Bush, Cheney, etc., has suffered any consequence the person who played a major role in their exposure has been hunted down and used as an example to show that anyone who dares expose the truth about our rulers' wars will be ground to dust and publicly annihilated. This will be a catastrophic defeat for freedom of the press, but more than that, it will say we can do anything, anywhere, to anyone, and no national or international laws, treaties, rules can stop us. This is a virtual secret trial. Today, the resident police officer inside Westminster Magistrate Court came out and informed us only six places available in the public gallery and three seats available for the press. This is a secret trial. Shame! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Where is to an open justice? Rebecca Vincent from Reporters Without Borders said, I have felt and able to do my job as an NGO observer 
in more professional conditions at a prison campus in Turkey than I have at Woolwich Crown Court or the Old Bailey. The same applies for this court. On 7 September at the Old Bailey, Julian Assange's extradition hearing resumed. It was an extraordinary political dramatic event in central London. Multiple defence witnesses, some world famous such as Noam Chomsky and Daniel Ellsberg, tore the US case to shreds. Unfortunately, the public will have little idea of what happened in court because as Craig Murray, who attended the whole trial, notes, this entire hearing has been conducted in effective secrecy, a comprehensive secrecy that gives sharp insight into the political economic structures of current Western society. Physical access to the courtroom has been extremely limited with a public gallery cut to five people. Video link access has similarly been extremely limited with 40 NGOs having their access cut by the judge from day one at the Old Bailey, including Amnesty International, English Pen, Reporters Without Borders, and observers from the European Parliament, among many others. The state and corporate media have virtually blackened out this hearing with a truly worrying unanimity and despite the implications of the case for media freedom. Finally, the corporations that act as internet gatekeepers have heavily suppressed social media posts about Assange and traffic to those few websites which are reporting. These are the words of Craig Murray. The last decade's treatment of Julian Assange was symbolized at the Old Bailey, where having daily been stripped, searched, naked and x-rayed, he sat silent, guarded behind a glass screen at the back of the court, unable to speak to his lawyers except by kneeling down and speaking or passing notes through a slit in the glass. United Nations rapporteur on torture, Niels Meltzer, has assessed his treatment by UK courts in the following way. Assange's procedural rights have been so severely and consistently violated that by now, this extradition proceeding has become irreparably arbitrary. He has not had adequate access to his lawyers. He has not been granted a single meeting since the lockdown in March. He has had extremely restricted access to his case documents. He only received a computer after a year in prison. He doesn't have internet access, and on top of that, they have glued down the keys of the keyboard so he cannot write. All of these restrictions are clearly unlawful. It is a political trial. In the case, if the case in London were decided solely on justice, as it should be in a state based on law, this battle would have been won by Assange. However, this trial of the century is above all a political trial, and there remains the feeling that the ruling was made beforehand, regardless of the law. Fidel Narvaez served as Ecuador's consul in the UK from the 2010 until July 2018. The extradition hearings give a veneer of legal process to what is in effect an attempted judicial rendition of Julian Assange to the US. Courtroom evidence exposed the legality on an unprecedented scale by America's and Britain's intelligence military, police, and judicial agencies to eliminate Assange. This is what award-winning journalist Charles Glass said. The US government's relentless campaign to bury Assange in the darkest cell of the most torturous US prison for the rest of his life has never ceased since 2010, when a secret grand jury was convened. 
the CIA, the FBI, and other agencies set up task forces to get Assange. US operations were conducted in Europe, informers were recruited, and intense collaborations took place with UK, Australian, and Swedish governments. The Pentagon alone set up a special task force deploying 120 counterintelligence officers to find at least one death that could be blamed on the published materials. They failed. Smears on an industrial scale were fed to the tame media outlets and recycled endlessly with The Guardian taking the lead on this. Operations were stepped up when Trump was elected with CIA Director Mike Pompeo in 2017 making an open declaration of war on WikiLeaks, saying Assange runs a non-state hostile intelligence agency. It ends now, he said. The Ecuadorian embassy, always heavily surveilled, was in 2017 fitted internally with hidden 24-hour cameras and microphones by the security company UC Global. Again and again, we see both inside the court and outside an abusive process. We've got to stand with Julian Assange. Join us. Thank you for listening. And only one message.